All right. So I'm going to be jumping around a bit because I don't like the way P3 and P4 are laid out. I think they should be um, kind of split up and distributed over the rest of the sections that we'll go over in this class. So at this point in time, since we've covered uh, lines and in general linear equations, I'd like to talk about absolute value equations. Now, absolute value equations are just simply an equation that has those weird vertical bars in it. These absolute values. So, this is an absolute value equation. It's a very simple absolute value equation, and so a very good place for us to start. Now, if you take a look at this, we're saying the absolute value of x equals 1, and our goal is to solve for x. So, recall what absolute value does. Absolute value just strips away the sign of x. So, absolute value of 2 is 2, absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So, just guessing, what solutions can you come up with this? Well, one immediate solution is that if x is 1, this should work out. Because if we drop the sign, or just make it positive, the absolute value of 1 is indeed just 1. So this is a solution. But there's actually one more solution to this. If we're making x positive, x could also start out as negative 1. Then taking the absolute value of negative 1 just means make negative 1 positive. Well, that would come out to be our positive one. So this would work as well. So that's the basic idea. This is the key idea of absolute value equations. The absolute value equations split up into two separate equations. One where what you have inside the absolute values equals the positive version of the right-hand side, and one where what's between the vertical bars is equal to the negative of the right-hand side. So let's take a look at an example. So this is example 11. of section P3, and so we're back on page 31. We're asked to solve the following absolute value equation. 2x minus 3, absolute value of that, of 2x minus 3, then subtract 5, and the result we should get from all that should be 8. Now, it isn't as simple as this. I can't just say, okay, everything over here equals 8, and everything over here equals negative 8. Solve those two and be done with it. Because the negative 5 isn't inside the absolute value. What you have to do is you have to isolate the absolute value. Or in other words, get everything between these two vertical bars by itself. So in this case, that means move the 5 to the other side. So here we're subtracting 5, so to move it, we'll have to add 5 to both sides to get 2x, absolute value of 2x, oops, that should be minus 3, equals 13. Now, now that it's just absolute value of whatever equals a number, now we can split this up. Because the only way 
when you look at a number and its absolute value is 13 is if that number started out as 13 or the number inside the vertical bars was negative 13 because when you take absolute value of negative 13 you'll get positive 13. So these are our two options. What's inside the vertical bars here can either be 13 or it can be negative 13. Either one will give us the correct answer. So now, now that we've got the key step done, all we have to do is solve. And now we're just solving two separate absolute values, excuse me, <laughs> two separate equations. So in both equations, we're going to add 3 to both sides, so we get 2x by itself. But on the left-hand side, on the left equation rather, you get 16, and on the second equation, adding 3 makes this minus 10. Now, in both equations, the next step is to divide by 2. Well, 16 over 2 is 8. Minus 10 over 2 is minus 5. And this is it. That's how you solve absolute value equations.